Good evening, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers, here from Sight Club and from the Tom Numbers Show. And I'm here with the magnificent Tarot. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm going to cut that. I'm going to start there again. Janine Morojo. So we will start again. Um, hey, everyone. Good evening. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, aka Numbers. Welcome to Sight Club and to the Tom Numbers Show. And I've got the magnificent Janine Morojo and the wonderful Michael Jaco. How are both of you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing great. Good to be here. Good, good. Well, I wanted to kick the show off, Janine, something we spoke about just before. Um, and the phrase, the calm before the storm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do some numbers on that because it ties into, I think, where your question is leading. Um, so A is one. B is two, C is three. That's simple gematria. 148 is simple gematria. Donald J. Trump is, is uh, simple gematria. Um, Emmett Brown, the time traveler, is 148. And time travel, time travel is 148 as well. But <clears throat> the calm before the storm comes to 231. Okay. 231 comes to the calm before the storm. That actually comes to a date, which is the 4th of August, which is coming up very soon. Mm. And there's been some very interesting comms. There's been a lot of leaders stepping down, as we've noticed. And Boris Johnson here in the UK famously, well, he stepped down, but I think he's coming back somehow. That's what the papers seem to be wanting him to already come back before he's gone. Um, and when he did his official kind of last prime minister's speech, he ended his speech with a famous tagline from, a te from the Terminator film. And he said, hasta la vista, baby. And, uh, and I've been talking about Terminator and Terminator 2 for a long, long time. Um, and in Terminator 2, there's a famous part of it called Judgment Day, because it's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And Judgment Day is August 29th. But there's a part where Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about a timeline in the Terminator 2 film. Interesting enough as well, Terminator is, is uh, um, uh, one thirty-five. Sorry, Terminator 2 is 135, and that's also um, uh, Ivana Trump. And protection is also 135, Ivana Trump. And we spoke about that in the last show, saying that we think she's kind of made into some kind of protection. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ivana Trump comes to 135, comes to protection, which comes to Terminator 2. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so Boris Johnson says this live on television, you know, globally. And I'm thinking, all this time I've been talking about Terminator 2 and Judgment Day is coming up and Boris Johnson quotes it in Parliament. And President Trump has done comms before on Judgment Day because Robert Patrick, who was the actor that played, I don't know if you've seen the film, Michael and Janine, but there's a silver Terminator. He's like a high-grade one. He can turn into kind of metallic objects. But the guy that played him was a gentleman called Robert Patrick. And he was actually a veteran when President Trump was in office still during 2020, he was on, I think, in the White House lawn or something similar to it. And he had Robert Patrick on the front row with some vets and they're all kind of bikers. And he went, well, we've got Robert Patrick, the T-1000 from Terminator 2. And he's like, it's there. And now Boris is kind of bringing it back around and mentioning it. And uh, in this clip where Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, the good one in, this, in, the, in the part two, in the Terminator 2, he gives a timeline and he says on August 4th, he says that the Skynet funding bill has passed. Now, Skynet comes to 94, which is uh, John John, and it's also White Hat. So I'm wondering, is there going to be some kind of um, funding that may be passed? Because we've seen what looks to be part of that with the Zimbabwe gold coin. In the last few days, it's been announced that um, that Zimbabwe has to stop their hyperinflation, which they suffered back in 2008, to stop it happening again because it was kind of taking off. They've started to issue gold coins to people at the banks. Well, the banks have issued it to the, are issuing it to the customers, to the clients, to the, to the public, which I think is fantastic. So I'm wondering if that's a soft disclosure on it. And I'm wondering if there might be another piece of legislation that leads to funding, but also more importantly, on the date that equals the calm before the storm, which was your question. So there's a few things there. Maybe we can look at two or three pieces. Maybe look at the Zimbabwe gold coin. Is there going to be another 
form of funding and what do we see about calm before the storm? Okay, so the Zimbabwe situation, I think you're partly right about what you're saying about it, but there's a few more things before that fully goes forward as like a new money system. Is that okay. what you're saying? Like it, it's going to take a little more. There's a few more things that hoops they have to jump before it'll actually, but it, but it looks like it's on the way. Okay. So on the way to being, but not maybe not by August 4th, because we're asking about that date. Yes. But the thing I got around the date is really interesting. Something to do with Trump. Something okay. to do with uh, Mr. T and uh, shocking revelations. Uh, things coming out. Things coming out that we've already known. I'm thinking, you know, something to do with the shenanigans that happened in November. Okay. Yeah. You can't really say the words here, but you know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, announced. Yeah or it coming out that who really won that competition kind of thing. Okay, interesting, interesting. Huh, and that, that comes to the 4th, the 4th of August comes to 2.31, the calm before the storm. Um, okay. The Statue of Liberty as well, interesting enough, and uh, the President Trump or magic President Trump. Um, yeah, interesting. Just any thoughts on that, Michael? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, the uh, the calm, we're, we're kind of like in that calm. The storm itself is going to be, if you look back on um, when the Allies came into uh, Italy, uh, World War II and uh, other parts, uh, landing and stuff like that, that that will be the storm. Okay. So uh, I think that's that's coming. We haven't yeah. even seen that yet. A lot of people think that, are, aren't we already in a storm? Uh -huh. No, it's it's going to get a lot worse, unfortunately, and that's what uh, that's that's what I've seen, and I think that um, that's that's where we're headed now. The Zimbabwe coin mm -hmm. uh, is is interesting because I think that you know many currencies uh, around the world are going to move to gold, and that basically takes away uh, the the darkies, uh, dark the baddies, their yeah their method of uh, controlling the world current the world's currencies and so forth like that. So I think that uh, more and more, we're going to see more and more countries start to move towards gold like we did with Russia. Zimbabwe's doing it now. Yeah. And uh, it, it'll it'll continue. It looks like, um, I was speaking to Charlie a couple of weeks ago about it, and he was saying that it's all kind of starting to happen with BRICS. So Brazil, mm -hmm. Russia, as you said, uh, India, China, yep. and South mm -hmm. Africa. And then, you know, I guess within the African continent, you've got Zimbabwe. And I did the numbers on BRICS. When it comes to 51 comes to Jasara. So I thought that was interesting because Jasara is the is the global version. Nasara is uh is in in America, but the global version is Jasara, which you know um Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and now Zimbabwe are all, you know, would all be classified as not America. So I thought that was interesting as well. Um Anything on that, Janine, in regards to BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, um, being, you know, the beginnings of Jasara? Well, this is about abundance for all. Okay. Really well aspected. That's why I'm going to read it that way. Yeah. It can be about other things, but it's also about a lot of money coming into a Good. large community. Okay, moving out of troubled water. So that would make sense to a reevaluation of what their money's worth based on now a gold standard as opposed to pit, you know, putting them in that arena with uh, the corrupt other system that's we know is going down. So they take them. I don't even know why they didn't do this a long time ago. I guess there's a lot of logistics to it. But yeah. it just what you just said, just mind blown, right? I'm mind blown because as you were saying it, it just makes sense. Or was it? Michael who said it I can't remember who just said it but as soon as, yeah it was Michael actually as soon as you shift and take on your own and create your own um, money system on a gold standard or a metal standard or whatever uh, you don't have to be beholden to those uh, those creeps that have been undervaluing your currency yeah that makes so much sense I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's pretty incredible isn't it and that's what and this India does. just India just launched uh, uh, international bullion exchange, 
where they're going to uh, trade gold and silver. So it's it's moving. It's all moving in that direction. So India, uh, they they love jewelry there. They're they're very big into jewelry. Uh, so I think they're gonna they're gonna have a really good time with uh, the gold and silver exchange there. It's gonna it's gonna do really well. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's all moving in the right direction. You know, it's yeah. the 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 old system uh, is is being destroyed. So there's been landings already, if you would think of World War II, and there's been in 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 inroads made. You know, baddies been yeah. taken down here and there. Now you say Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is basically being tapped because I think a lot of these guys are just you know sleight of hand. Oh, I'm I'm stepping down, but he's looks like he's going to NATO to head up huh. NATO, and right. he's he's on tap for that. So it's just you know. Um, you know, a little, little shell game where you put the little sh uh, cor corner shell in, in the cups and you move them around and yeah. it's like, where did it go? It's like, yeah. oh, it's over here. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. all smoke and mirrors with these guys yeah. until they're taken down. They, they all have to be taken down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking of the, um, of the Jasara and uh, the abundance, mm -hmm. Janine, that you saw in the cards. And um, so I don't know if you, I became aware of, fractional reserve banking probably 17 maybe 20 years ago somewhere between that time frame because there was a book uh, written by uh, ed griffin called the creature from jekyll island i don't know if you've heard of of that michael and, and janine um and scott did an episode with him just in the last month maybe three or four weeks ago and uh so i did the number so his book is the creature from jekyll island which is describing the the cut the banking cartel you know the fractional reserve banking and it's a it's a it's a well-known thing now it's been out for yeah. you know a while um but i did the numbers on the book the creature from jekyll island because he just that's the name he gave um he gave them and he titled his book that that comes to 310 and on the flip side the quantum financial system comes to 310 mm. so the very thing that they kind of the, the polar opposite of the quantum financial system is the creature from Jekyll Island, that, which was brilliantly highlighted and and uh, written about by Ed Griffin, mm -hmm. comes to 310. And the creature from Jekyll Island comes to 310. And there's also a biblical reference um, of abundance to the people. So Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, Malachi 310, talks about the windows of heaven being opened and pouring out a blessing upon the people that it's too much for them to receive, which in my mind sounds like Jasara and Nasara. Um, and the interesting thing about window, window is 88, which is Trump, and windows is Trump's, but it's also currency and it's also quantum. And so you've got the quantum financial system, which is all to do with currency and wealth. So I thought that was an interesting thing that Scott kind of reminded me of just a couple of weeks ago with, with uh, the Ed Griffin part. And I'm glad that Janine's got, you know, seen the abundance again with the whole thing with Zimbabwe. Yeah. It's beautiful. So Janine, I have, I have a question. Uh, I had a guest on the show made some, and you'll, you'll be interested in this as well, Tom, and maybe, maybe you can do some numbers on these. She said that one of the reasons the, um, uh, the crop circles happen in England was because there's, um, inner earth beings that are very advanced in England. And also I, I, so we can look at that, but the other thing that really came to my, I don't know why it came to my mind, but I've been having dreams of um, uh, Canada going into Canada and like trying to stop bad things and happening there in Canada. But there in Vancouver, uh, I feel that it is, is a magical place in uh, Haida Gwaii, like you were talking about Janine, uh, that area is just absolutely magical. I believe there's very advanced beings underneath that area as well so maybe we can look at that cool let's start with that first uh thing you were talking about how the should uk we and crop circles and stuff yeah yeah how do you want to ask it um are there is that the case uh the reason why the crop circles happen so much in england of course they're not happening now as much but uh the reason why they happen so much was because there's advanced inner earth beings uh in england <laughs> <laughs> yes. So there's a big yes. Uh, I got Beautiful. recently that some of those circles were made maybe from other dimensionals. 
maybe mm -hmm. not necessarily off planet, but not necessarily on planet. So that could be like living dimensionally different, which could be like underground. So mm -hmm. that kind of ties into what I recently read about the latest crop circle, but you, you're getting a solid yes there on what you said. Ah, oh, beautiful. beautiful. Directly relates to those creatures or energies. Uh, and yeah. let's look at that second one. Yeah, the Vancouver Haida Gwaii area. And so, so such, such a such a magical area, all the way up into the mountains here. It's just like mm -hmm. one of the most exquisite areas I've ever been to. Yeah, I want to build a, a shack out there, so I'll be inviting all of you guys. <laughs> oh, I will. I will. Yeah, I will come yeah, right yeah, gonna, yeah I'll show you around. As soon as the government of Canada goes bye bye, I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. That will be a celebration time. Yes. Mm -hmm. and you you guys can come here, and we can all go there. It'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm look forward I'll to those be days. Jumping days. in that pool you got back there. Well, okay, good. Yeah, you because know, it's really hot here. Oh, it's like a heat wave. Really? It's hot here, though. <laughs> yeah, we're like 40 degrees uh, like Celsius, mm -hmm. which is really hot for us. Well, the good thing is what I'm seeing is on the other side of this. Well, maybe not so good, but the winter is going to be like a lot colder than usual. So I think what? that we're actually going into uh, a period of um, a mini ice age period in this 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 high the high temperatures we're experiencing right now is basically uh, a last like spike and then it's going to start to slowly go down for for many years and, wow. and get a lot colder that's oh. what cliff high's been saying for a long time oh really okay okay this is interesting so there's a big yes first of all that there's mm. very uh, magical energies and entities there and maybe even ancient but there's also um sort of hybrids so coming from other planetary mm. i think there might be a gateway around the Haida Gwaii. that's where oh. i saw a lot of off-world activity right over my head in mm -hmm. particular one night but off and on while i lived there but in particular this one night but um yeah so they they seem to come back and forth and they could even live amongst the people there so amongst the communities they literally mm -hmm. uh intermingle now that's interesting because when you go to some of these remote areas in like northwestern Canada, so Haida Gwaii's northwestern point of Canada, but there's some other areas, the Skeena, and there's all these off the uh, Vancouver Island. The other, it's all really interesting and very magical. I feel like that's what it's talking about. Sometimes you meet people that don't seem very human. I'm going to tell you that. They seem otherworldly and very spiritually in touch. Sometimes they're real hermits too. I know several people. You have to really go looking for them. Everybody knows about them, but you got to go looking for them. They're like deeply connected people, but <clears throat> they don't they don't come out in public very often. I think I think they're they're literally living in those areas too. Mm -hmm. and, and they don't appear just to anyone. Yeah, you're, if your vibrations high, they. I, yeah. I I think I experienced a Lemurian when I was in uh, Mount Shasta one time. Came back, mm. came. I talked to him for a little bit. Yeah. So uh, and he was like white skin, white hair. The things that he he talked about were like just it was like magical. He was a magical person. So at first when I first saw him, I thought it is that a man or a woman, and uh, and then he spoke to me and I was like, okay, a man. But yeah, it's uh, it's 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 interesting. I think there's Elvin and, you know, all kind of uh, stuff that we're going to be, uh, some of us, some of us <laughs> will be exposed to uh, uh, in the near future mm -hmm. as energies change. Yeah, I definitely saw a lot of fairy circles. Last time mm -hmm. I was in the Haida Gwaii oh. with Ashley, we both noticed there was, you know, those big circles. So you'd have a mushroom in almost a perfect circle, a mushroom mm -hmm. ring. And uh, and you would once you get inside that ring, it feels like you're in an altered universe. It's really weird, beautiful, but a little spooky sometimes. I think we were we were in amongst, you know, the elementals. Yep. In a big way. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Janine, I so I've been having these reoccurring dreams about, like I said, going into Canada, and I don't always remember all of them, but just before the show, they started really coming in. And uh, you're you're involved in uh, you know helping to uh, push in that 
that space, you know, because I, I think the dream world is, uh, is real. Sometimes yeah. you're, you're involved in that space too. I think we're working together and other people are working together that we all know to, yeah. to change, you know, that what's going on the, oh, to basically okay. take the baddies out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Janine, I, um, when you were talking about the crop circles, when Michael asked that question, so, um, uh, if you do the, the crop circle, hang on, let me do that again. So, uh, crop is 52, which is heart, which is earth. So that mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. it's also ship, but, uh, and then circles 50, which is America, which is Donald, which is Paul, which is Eileen, which is also fight. And president Trump says, you know, continue to fight. But if you do crop circles it comes to 121, which is revelation, which is golden Jubilee, um, second coming, uh, Gotham city for Batman and Robin, which, uh, has come up with another code, which I mentioned in a second, but if you do the crop circles, uh, or magic crop circles, it comes to 154, which comes to actually I can't say it, but it says it comes to <laughs> tarot by your, so that comes to 154. <laughs> so, um, and then you'd said about fairy, uh, fairy circle. So fairy comes to 59 which is actually joker um joker card top card um if you have two of them it takes you to 78 kennedy but uh circle again is 50 so fairy circle comes to 109 which comes to the word 17 comes to zapruder comes to diana spencer comes to site club um so i thought that was cool and it comes to trillion as in the zimbabwe notes so uh fairy circle um Something else that has come up recently with some comments from President Trump is his golf course in Bedminster. So Bedminster, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I'd seen it before, but I wasn't really clear on kind of everything about it. But something caught my attention. So about three weeks ago now, there was um, a lady, and I can't think of her name. It's quite a unique name, but she's a presenter on the channel OAN, OAN, o -A -N, that mm -hmm. kind of Patriot Network channel. And she starts off, they're sitting in President Trump's uh, property, Bedminster, because it's the golf course that he owns. And I didn't know this, but I know it now. And I think it's worth telling the audience. She says, well, not a lot of people know this, but this was John DeLorean's home many years ago. Mm -hmm. And President Trump says, yeah, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And John DeLorean was the owner of the cars DeLorean. And DeLorean is the time machine car in Back to the Future. And I've been talking about Back to the Future a lot, and this is what this is, 88 miles per hour, because 88 is Trump. If you mm -hmm. can see it, MPH is miles per hour. Comes yep. to John Kennedy time travel. And uh, so President Trump actually owns the former property of John DeLorean, mm -hmm. and that's where the DeLorean, he's the one that <laughs> is named after him, the DeLorean time machine, the car oh. in, the, in Back to the Future. And DeLorean 74, which comes to Tarot, 74 yeah. comes to Jesus, it comes to Gematria, it comes to Messiah, it comes to London, it comes to English. Um, and so two of the films, you got the Terminator films with President Trump uh, a while ago, and then recently with Boris, and now another Back to the Future reference with President Trump. And so people probably think, why does Tom Numbers always go on about Terminator and Back to the Future? Well, there you go. And I didn't know this, but it's almost like she was saying, not a lot of people know this, but now you do, and you need to pay attention to this, Tom. And so um, and you then mentioned a family called the Coppers, uh, Copperthwaite family that owned it back in 1917. And uh, 1917 um, is the year that Kennedy was born. Mm. And you'll remember when President Trump was taking on the world and the, the press early 2020 when everything changed, he kept referring to the Spanish flu of 1917. But that's actually incorrect because it's, it's the Spanish flu of 1918. But he was referring to the year that Kennedy was born. And I think he's also making reference to this place in Bedminster because it's all tied with Back to the Future. And um, the other interesting thing about it is if you do Bedminster, that comes to 109, which just comes to a uh, fairy circle, which Janine just brought up. Mm -hmm. um, 109 is Sabruda, 17, etc. And then New Jersey, the state that it's in, is 124, which actually comes to the word gigawatts, the way they spell it in Back to the Future, is, and it's the power source. But when you add them together, Bedminster, New Jersey, 
it comes to 233, which comes to gold back digital currency, follow the white rabbit, the 10 days of darkness and John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Wow. And it's, yeah, I'm like, I think we're in the matrix, Michael. I think we're, in, I think we're in a dream, you know? Um, and there it is. And I didn't know this, but I do know it now. Um, and then I looked into this a little, little bit more and I was just feeling like you do with your intuition and Janine with your intuition with your cards and, and uh, something about this copper weight. So I looked at that and then I was thinking, and it used to be a farm. So it used to be a farm. Then the copper weight family had it, the copper weight farm. And then it was uh, owned by John DeLorean and then President Trump turned it into a golf course. So the actual technical name of the golf course is Trump National Bedminster. And that comes to two, eight, three. And I looked at this and I was playing around with the numbers and, and uh, that comes to 245, which is Tom Sidney Bushnell. And then 38 is the remaining figure, which is gold, but it's also farm. And so my question, Janine, is uh, was I, did I own it before the copper's weight? Was I a farmer of that land? I'm just wondering. Seems a bit self-indulgent, but I'm just, I'm just wondering. It came to me and I'm like, I don't know, there's something about that place, something about Back to the Future, I might get these codes. So I'm just wondering what the cards say on that. Well, we got a soft yes. Okay. Uh, so I have a feeling you might have either worked on the farm or had something to do with the farm. So you okay. were in the neighborhood of the farm. Yeah. Maybe not literally on the farm. And we've got the world card. So when you keep saying Back to the Future and keep referencing that time machine, I keep feeling like, you're picking up on what happened first and now we're in the now and then we go back to i have a feeling we're going back and forth i've had a weird feeling that the time lines keep crossing over right now i know yes. it's not insane but that's why i think we're noticing weird things about movies we used to watch the scenes are different yeah like, i feel like we're at a really weird time when it's getting wavery that's yeah. the only thing I can think of wavy timelines. And uh, sometimes I'm, I'm losing hours in a day or for, for instance, this morning, and I wonder if anyone else is feeling this. Uh, I felt distinctly like time stood still for many hours because I got up at sort of the usual time around 7 a.m. And yeah. then it took hours and hours to get up to, to 10 a.m. I'm like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah. I felt like I lived a whole day and a half, and then it was 10 a.m. finally. So yeah. I got yeah. so much done, you can't even fathom. Uh, so it's like, didn't make any sense to me. I think we've got some funny things going on with timelines. Yeah, it feels like that. It does, because it seems to, I don't know about you guys, but it seems to feel like it changes almost daily, you know? I get a huge download on a number of things and then I'm like, okay, that's what, and then, and then something else will come up and it seems to, it seems to shift or, or park to the side and then it might get kind of come out back out of nowhere sometimes. So yeah, the feeling of time and linear time is really kind of feeling a bit strange right now. Yeah, for sure. Talking of weird things. So I think you mentioned it when you saw off world things in the Heidegger. So I've been recently looking at a lot of, well, Mark Atwood put me onto this. I, I'd mentioned before on shows that when I was in the States last year, I saw clearly what appeared to be some kind of, well, not stars because they were flashing on and off. Um, and uh, now I'm beginning to see ones moving. And it's quite easy. I saw one tonight, actually. So I look up at this. I look, Mark says, look at a star and just kind of give it intention and just say almost like the thought of I'm ready. And, uh, and I, I see they're not planes they're these and they're not satellites because they're going too slowly and sometimes they move sometimes they curve and sometimes they stop and sometimes they flash and then they'll go off again but it looks like they're from what I can gather maybe scout ships Mark seems to think that's what they are um and then sometimes they're really bright ones so I was with a friend the other night and she'd not seen them before and I said well let's just do what Mark says look at the sky look find a star kind of give it good intention and then literally within two minutes, this this bright light appeared and started moving across. It was quite low in the sky. It moved across. And it, she checked it. It wasn't a satellite. It wasn't a plane because she's quite au okay fait with that in this area. She, she tracks them all the time. 
She's like, no, it definitely wasn't either of those two things. And then it got bright, almost kind of like winking. And then it very deliberately, but but not too quickly, within a few seconds, it dimmed off and kind of went out again. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, we saw some others later that night. Um, and uh, that's how Mark describes them. He says, you know, just kind of focus on, a, on an object in the sky, give it some thanks and so I'm ready. And they start to appear. What was your experience like in uh, the Heidi Uh There was a whole fleet and they were in formation, and but they kept changing formation huh. and moving so fast. All of a sudden, they'd look really big on the horizon yeah. and then move back so fast they had to move thousands of miles or something because now they're little tiny dots and then they get really close again but it was too fast for anything that i that you could say was a craft made by yeah. human and also uh the formation would change and then we lost so my daughter's father and i we were still together then and we were staring up at these things and he's not necessarily red pill or thinks quite like we do like he's pretty smart about the government being bad news and whatever, but um, not yeah. to the extent we are. And he was watching too, and we can still discuss this to this day. So this would have been in 91. Okay. So 92, sorry, 92. And um, they were moving around and then we lost all this time because now it's morning. So we started watching them after Raven was tucked in. So she's just a baby. Yeah. She would have been in bed by eight, got dark, maybe by nine or 10, we watched it. And then we, it was morning all of a sudden and neither of us remember anything other than we're in the very same spot staring wow. at these things. And now it's twilight or morning light yeah. and the sun was coming up and we're like, what, what happened to the night? We don't know wow. We don't know what happened. So we lost time wow. staring at these things. Mm. Yeah, it was wild. But Have you I, had any I just, insight? Sorry, go on, Janine. Yeah. I just pulled some cards on what you were talking about. Yes. Uh, and I get, so we're being watched uh, by, because they know we're moving into a time when we're going to really need them. So humans are about to face a big, some really scary things. Okay. In particular, if you're a fear-based person, I mean... I, I I say bring it on, but you know what I mean? Not everybody's yeah. open-minded like that. But anyway, we're about to face some really big, scary events. And we're going into a time, and that's where that calm before the storm. I think the storm's upon us really quick here. And it's going to get really hard. And they realize that for a lot of people, not everybody. Some people are looking forward to it, but it's going to get hard for some people. And this was their intention, the card I pulled loving and nurturing so the ones that are around the earth that maybe we're seeing a lot more of are hovering around watching the events watching the human race through this big this big shift that's coming and also i think not only are they watching out of curiosity but nurturing in intention so they're putting intentions out there kind of like guardian angels or something is the yeah. feeling i Wow. Thank you. Have you had any seen any things like that, Michael? Any experiences with with lights or ships or any anything on your with your work and your experiences? Yeah, I was uh <clears throat> uh kayaking uh over a period of like uh 24 hours on uh Lake Tahoe and I was coming towards the end of it and uh, I saw a ship, uh massive ship over the lake. It just kind of like I just looked up and there it was. And then the next thing I know, I'm like sitting in my, in my boat looking forward. And I was like, yeah. what? And I looked up and it was going, whoop, and it just took <laughs> off. And yeah. I was like, I, and then, cause so sometimes little pieces come through. And, uh, so I, I was on board that ship and, uh, huh. and they were, they were, they were telling me about, you know, what's, what's going on. Cause somehow I'm a commander. So they were updating me and, uh, I was, I was getting an update on what's, what's coming. So, uh, that was, that was a couple of years ago, but, um, I think that anyone that wants to, you know, have those, um, you know, observations 
you, you all you need to do is just go out into the night sky and just have have a, a sense of you know you you want to experience them yeah and almost almost without i've always been it depends on where you are too of course but when i was in sedona we would go out it didn't matter what night yeah. you would go out you you could just like think and there they were they pop and it's uh they're i think a lot of people are like that some people can pull them in uh, some people have, uh, you know, experiences with them often. And it, again, it might be uh, dependent upon the area where you're at. I, I talk to a lot of people like you guys do, and they tell me all kinds of stories like this, you know, how they're all they do is just go out and they start thinking about it. And then, boom, there it is. Uh, and there's lots of groups that do that in in different locations where there there's lots of sightings. Uh, so, you know, that the future we will have more um involvement with them i think back during atlantean times before the fall of atlantis there was a lots of involvement definitely back in lemurian times um but and and that kind of leads into what janine was saying that some of those off-worlders are involved with the inner earth as well so mm -hmm. there's been that long-term i think communication that's been going on and as we move forward we'll start to see more and more of that start to materialize more people have sightings mm -hmm. and i mean we're hearing, hearing all the u.s navy you know um pilots are starting to come out and all kind of military people are coming out now <clears throat> so i think it's been given the green light to uh start to expose it more and more and more and so as that happens and people start to go well maybe it's real that opens those doorways within the consciousness to allow it to come through yeah, yeah okay, I think no, but, um... up on it I think that energy picks up on your openness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, talking of future and energy. Um, so I was looking at one of the other films I've always mentioned is, uh, is Tenet by Christopher Nolan, who's a white hat director. And some things dawned on me just this, this afternoon, the early evening when I was, was going through it. Um, but, Christopher Nolan has a, his company is called Syncopy, S-Y-N-C-O-P-Y, Syncopy. Um, it's his production company. But someone did a little video, a little video short on YouTube and, and pointed some things out, which I thought was interesting. Um, Syncopy actually comes to 119, which comes to Nikola Tesla. And uh, he's, he's done a film about Nikola Tesla in The Prestige, um, which kind of is a soft disclosure on on time travel, on cloning and dimensional things. And David Bowie was in, in, in that actually, he played Nikola Tesla, which was an interesting choice. Um, and this little short video posed the question that um, Chris Ferland's company, he doesn't have a phone number, he doesn't have an email, doesn't have an address. Um, he's got four like members, that's Christopher Nolan, his wife, Emma Thompson, who produces the films with him and then two other no, unknown people, but it's a billion dollar company because he's kind of the biggest box office movie maker out there. Um, but it, they were postulate, uh, postulating the question that sin copy could be a thing that's actually coming from the future to us. And when you, I was thinking about this, this while you were talking about the future, Michael, and maybe we could look at it, Janine is Christopher Nolan, somehow connected to the future is he come has he come from the future to produce these films because just in a 3d kind of looking at the way he constructs these films it's almost impossible to kind of fathom and work them out the way he does but as you kind of look through the kind of four and fifth dimensional lens it becomes a little clearer but there's still works of genius and i i'm just wondering if he's actually from the future in some way to You're produce a, these films. a soft yes <laughs> okay yeah, and uh, three a three of wands. So there's a little more details there that would describe it. I don't okay. know. That, so, so I'll keep looking here. The three of pentacles. So that's interesting. Possibly they were made in the future, and okay. then and then somehow they're brought to us because okay. this almost looks like the part that maybe needs adjustment to what you're saying is that they come from the future. Yeah. So they make them there and then somehow bring them to the now. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. Render them in the now. 
Okay, that's a good fit. So he's received, so they're coming from the future and he's the one that receives it and then produces it here so we can watch it now. Okay. And maybe they give him technology. And then this card was underneath, which is like, so that's future technology and or galactic helpers or future selves, this card. Uh, so I feel like maybe um, he's getting help and he's yeah. just earth sort of vessel they're using okay in this so people can watch it so it's yeah. not really him but he's he's the one uh that they're going through got it okay yeah. interesting interesting and um he in this film tenet he shows a he shows it's called inversion and that you know we've had the whole thing of inversion but inversion in this sense is talking about reversing the flow of time, reversing entropy. And so it's bringing something from the future, like you've described, you know, the actual film, the information of the film, and the film describes inversion as a process bringing it back. So you've got the two timelines, you've got one going forward and then the exact opposite, but it's, it's coming from the future and working backwards. Um, yeah. You got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was that? Is that that's a ace that's card? A big yes, that's a big excited yes. It's like, yes. Okay, got it. Okay, that's probably a clearer way to put it. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Yep. And the interesting thing about it is, the word inversion comes to one twenty five, which comes to John Kennedy, it also comes to a dark to light, but it also comes to time travel. Um, but they do make the distinction in the film that it's not time travel; it's this reverse of the flow of time. Mm. Um, but I think. I still think time travel is possible, but it's almost like they're kind of showing a, a t well, not, they make the distinction, but it feels like a kind of, you, you're, well, you're traveling in reverse. That's literally what it is. You're traveling in reverse with inversion, but the, but the numbers are identical. Do. Planets do that. They call it retrograde. Ah. So yeah. in their orbit, you, they're seen to go backwards and ah, then they yeah. re, re go. Uh, you know, regain uh, forward motion, but the retrograde will last about three weeks, and depending on the planet, some of them three years, some of them uh -huh. longer if it's a far away planet. So they do all go what they call retrograde every once in a while, and it's the energies it throws everything off from their yeah. usual uh, flow. But it's good because retrogrades can bring up all kinds of unresolved things and make right. you go over things that you hadn't finished and they, if you if you look at them in a positive way you can utilize the energy that's a cleansing process mm -hmm. that's interesting when you said about the retrograde in the planets i immediately thought of superman so the one with christopher reeves um the first superman when he when uh well there's nuclear missiles fired and it starts a chain reaction of earthquakes in california because Lex Luthor, played by Gene Hackman, wants to wipe out the West Coast and get all the new land that he's bought, kind of in kind of Nevada and the, I guess the you know the inner side of California. Um, but Superman loses his love interest, Lois Lane, so she dies. But then he literally does a retrograde and he spins around the Earth. I think mm. it's like six, seven times. Time, yeah. yeah, it goes back in time. It literally spins the Earth back. And the mm. interesting thing about the numbers on that Superman is 100 is 107, which is Trump's, which is quantum, which is currency, which is atonement. Um, it's also Aquarius. So the age of Aquarius, and you know, we, we're going into that. Some say that we've started it already. Mm -hmm. um, but the retrograde and, and atonement and, uh, and quantum and yeah, reversing it. That's, that's, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Superman 107. Yeah. So I, I firmly believe there, there are time wars that are happening. Uh, they're, they're ongoing. Uh, we, we see examples of it when we see the Mandela effect, which basically doesn't something, someone remembers something um, yeah. from a past and it, it, it doesn't fit. I've, I've had so many instances of that. Um, yeah. uh, I feel that I'm involved in them in, in uh, the space program. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's a lot of memories of that come through for me. And I think a lot of people that are involved in those, um, especially if it's going into the past, distant past, like civil war type stuff, 
Yeah. Cause I, I have, uh, have, uh, been civil war generals. Uh, so if you're in one of those timelines where really, where they're really trying to change something yeah. from in the past, that's easier for someone in the space program to actually go in and have an effect. Cause you basically go in and use that energy of that time uh, that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. So there was one time I was having a dream where I was basically doing that. Uh, I was being pulled back in time. Uh, and someone came in and, and assassinate, tried to assassinate me in this life. And I think they were effective, but, um, and I, I came up and as I'm coming back to the surface, like, oh, I'm out of that dream type thing. I'm thinking to myself, well, is it going to mean that my, my children are going to be born? Is I going to, am I going to wake up? Everything's different. And they're like, and I got immediately no. if it happens in this life, uh, if they come in and take you out from a timeline in this life, or you're involved from this life, it doesn't affect you personally. So all, all kind of crazy things that, you know, uh, I think we're going to learn about the, the timeline wars and kind of like the Superman stuff. I mean, we can go back, there's, you know, physically we can go back in time, you know, yeah. through some kind of spacecraft, uh, you know, technology and so forth and have an effect on it. But like I said, I don't think it has an effect. Like we see a lot of times where if, if you get killed in a past lifetime, then all your stuff and, and everything changes. Yeah. I think there's something different on that. There were, that's not being revealed. And I, I think I got that in a dream. Wow. Mm. That's really interesting, Michael, what you, what you just shared there. Cause, um, timeline, uh, wars and, and well, firstly, well, I'll do this one first and then the, then the secret space program. So timeline wars, um, timeline, time is 47, John. Line is 40, which is US, it's also RV. But that takes you to 87, which is Truth, which is Junior, which is Stella. Um, Wars is actually 61, which is Casino, it's Miracle, um, it's Don JR. But that comes to 148, which is Simple Gematria, which is Time Traveler, the American way to spell it with one L. Uh, Emmett Brown from Back to the Future, the Time Traveler. But it's also Donald J. Trump. It's also Project Blue Moon, we mentioned that before. Um, and uh there was something else you added with it as well you so you said the timeline timeline wars um and also yes yeah, so the so the secret space program so mm -hmm. um the numbers on that come to 235 which comes to uh john uh it comes to president john kennedy um it comes to time travel magic power it also comes to uh, Baron William Trump, 235. And I was looking at Baron and they're making notes saying that he's at seven foot now. So when he was at Ivana's funeral service, they're saying he's seven foot tall and he's mm -hmm. probably only, I don't know, 16 years old or whatever age he is now, probably mm -hmm. soon to be 17. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been thinking for a while that because of the numbers on it, that um, Baron Trump and Kennedy may somehow be connected um i don't know maybe they're fractals of each other i also get uh, some possible correlation with tesla and even even christ even jesus christ um but i'm wondering Ginny, can we ask the question to the cards is baron trump part of the secret space program because he's you know seven foot tall he's he's trump's son and uh he's probably going to get taller i'd have thought so i'll just add that i did a real deep dive on Trump's whole family. Yes. And just the long and short of it, you guys might remember, is that uh, Trump isn't, the parents that they say are his parents are not the parents. Yeah. And he was sort of created, I'm thinking off world. Yeah. He's like a hybrid. Yeah. And so, so is Baron. Yes. And yeah, so it was wild. It was like yeah. he was created and he was also placed into a dark cult family. His family oh. are, have dark cult connections. And uh, of course, rubbed shoulders with all those elites. And, yeah. and, and but, but he wasn't compromised uh, the way they compromised themselves. And they yeah. saw that they did good work with him. 
is what I got. And yeah. they that's when they stepped up and told them what sort of they had planned for them. They yeah. being the white hats and those white hats have been around for like uh is probably as long as the dark hats. Mm. Yes. Right. Yeah, we we can we can talk about I want to question with Janine about the the secret space program, which I think is more um like the the Hitler people guys starts with yeah. an N. I don't want to mess up that's right, yeah. But uh those guys, I think that is there's a separation. So those would be black hat ssp and then there's a galactic council um galactic federation type that trump is trying to make the connection with when he started secret when he started space force okay and uh that is that's basically to push finally push all those those dark uh ssp types out because there's a lot of controls there's all kind of different groups the kruger group the umbrella group now the umbrella group was under i believe kruger. did under you say kruger group yeah, there's all kind of crazy, crazy names for them. Uh, so there's a Kruger group. And so that might, you might know something uh, that mm -hmm. kind of correlates with that. And there's all kind of different ones. Uh, but mm -hmm. one of them was the umbrella group. And that umbrella group is basically uh, on the, on the day that Kennedy was assassinated, uh, George Bush was there and mm -hmm. there was signaling that was going on with the umbrella. So huh. um yeah, so people noticed it, and I've had people on my show that talk about all about that stuff. They didn't know that I knew that that was all like yeah. space connection, all kind of crazy stuff. But there's so there's a lot, lot of stuff that we're going to find out. So maybe uh, after we do this, we can kind of look at some of that. So you're asking if Baron Trump is connected to the secret space program? That was my question. Yeah. So when when Michael says he was part of this space program i was assuming it was the secret space program but i didn't know if they'd split but the numbers secret space program so i guess if there's a good version of the secret space program right right it's galactic now but secret space program comes to 235 which comes to baron william trump and it comes to um president john kennedy and comes to magic power time travel yeah so i get they recently told baron maybe he had to be a certain age or something but he was recently told that that's their wish for him okay and he's getting used to the idea yeah okay so he's been very recently informed about a lot of things that his okay. family are connected to and maybe what his dad's really been doing and all kinds of this is quite recent it was he was kept in the dark and they started informing them, I'm getting around 14 years old, and they've been doing it slowly ever since to okay. try to, do that. yeah, so bring them in to the fold. Yeah. Because he's obviously got a place. He's on, and he's having a little, he's at that awkward age anyway. He's having a yeah. little, like he's 80% there, but he's still got a little ways to go. So yeah. I think it's a yes down the road. It's their yeah. desire to. I don't think he's literally got a placement yet. He has he, to agree. He has to agree. Oh, of course, yeah, you got it. Okay. Does he have? Is there any connection you can see with the cards? Is there any connection with Kenneth, with JFK, and Baron, and also um, a second question to that? Is there any? Is there anything with Baron and, and Christ? Is there? A, is there a, a Christ element or high? You know, Christ consciousness element with him? So we're doing JFK and. Baron. Please, yeah, yeah. The connection. So the thing on Baron, it could be because I did a show with uh, Ishmael Perez, and he talked about as you go higher in dimensions, you become taller. So he, this kind of might fit in, you know, with with his height. That uh, mm -hmm. he's 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 come in. He's a star being uh, that's come in uh, to help help us make the transition to the higher consciousness realms, higher dimensional realms. Mm -hmm. That I and I think that's an, another reason why there seems to be a lot of targeting, you know, for the young ones. So that's that's interesting. So uh, ho yeah. hopefully, I think he's going to be able to avoid having any problems, though. Yeah, uh, it feels like a big yes to me. With that, yes. Yeah. Uh, they seem to know each other. Okay. And they could even be related with that. So they have some kind of bloodline relation because this yeah. card can be about relations. Yeah. So they have a relation and it's somehow connects through a feminine. So the mother, 
one of ah. these mother mm. connects or that um, a female connects them. Okay. And they're also karmically connected. So entangled in their karma and why they're here and what work they're doing. Kind of like in a way we are. Yes. Right? How yes. we're even doing what we're doing together. So there's a connection between Baron Trump and JFK. And mm -hmm. is there any connection between Baron Trump and, and Christ or the person that was Christ, Jesus, you know, whenever, or is it just a consciousness thing or both or? Yeah, I've heard that Melania is a high, high level, like Pleiadian. Yeah. 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 She was totally uh, and very ex exquisite sort of not, but not human. Yeah. 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 Pretty interesting. Yeah. That makes sense too, hey? Okay. Uh, I would say yes, because we've got sort of a soft yes and then a truth card. So there's yeah. truth to what you're saying. Uh -huh. Okay, but I think it might have something to do with, uh, so we've got this three of swords and something they were trying to snuff out, surrender to uh, bloodline. Uh -huh. You know, they try to snuff out the Jesus bloodline. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it has something to do. So I guess it goes through the bloodline somehow. Uh, there's connection. But I wouldn't say they're literally related, uh, but they're in this some similar bloodline. So they've got they've got connection that way. Okay. Hmm. One other last question with that, Janine, on this thing. Interestingly enough, bloodline comes to eighty eight when you do the numbers on that, um, which is Trump. But uh, is there any connection, either energetically or directly, with Baron Trump and Princess Diana? That was interesting, that picture of uh, Trump with Melania, obviously wearing a big mask. Her fit, her head looked twice the size it should. Yeah. Like, what was that all about? What They when, were obviously showing you she's wearing a mask, whoever that is. When was this? Was that recently? Yeah, really recent. And I shared it and everybody was sharing it on Telegram. It, oh. They're sitting down together and... Uh, Trump's got his arms around Melania, but she's obviously her face comes forward and is much bigger than it should be. And it looks like a mask and you can almost see two ears. So one of the ears is even showing a real ear. It's very interesting. Interesting. OK, so tell me the question again. The question was, um, is there a connection between Diana and Baron Trump? So, yes. Okay. Uh, they're very much soul connected. So there's a soul connection card and past lifely connected. They have okay. a lot of joy and uh, there's a lot of nurturing between the two of them. And they enjoy each other's company. So they know each other really well. Uh, she's been a nurturing feminine figure, but I wouldn't say mother. Okay. I never get she is the mother, but I do get they're really close and have had lots of dealings with each other while he was growing up so yeah. so so there's a soul connection but also a physical connection yeah. in this yeah. earthly timeline okay yeah. with that yeah okay that let's let's take it one more step so the so the picture that you showed on telegram i need to look that up or send it to me if you get i'd, I'd be curious to see that Did you, what see is, it, you know what i'm talking about michael that picture uh i'm gonna pull up your I'm looking at your telegram. I'm looking through. Oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet, but yeah, it'd be quite a quite a while ago. So I share a lot of oh, stuff. Oh, it's been a while. Okay. What <laughs> like is a, a today. But uh yeah, anyway, you guys you'll see it later because it's been making the rounds. It's a quite an interesting picture. So that photograph mm -hmm. of Melania, but not Melania, because it looks like she's wearing a mask. Was it Diana under the mask? Mm -hmm. Let's ask that. Okay, so we've got a soft yes, but yeah. how I'm going to read that is, I think they were calming and or alluding to that, okay. but I'm not sure literally in that photograph that was, I think okay. that was a photoshopped photo. So the cards are really literal. So I, it was alluding to. Okay. That. Yeah. 
I, I know I said, yeah, send you over there. <laughs> I know I said that would be the last one on it, but one other thought's come in. Has has Diana ever played Ivana Trump in a mouth? Has has Diana ever played Ivana Trump? Ivana? Yeah, Ivana. Has 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 Diana ever played Ivana Trump in a mask for whatever, you know, they sometimes kind of interchange with characters just for the either for fun or for cons. Sorry. Betty is just yelling at me. <laughs> My little black cat. She's telling us, yeah. <laughs> she's telling me it's past her dinner time, is what she's telling. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Okay. Or okay, they want that to remain a secret. Okay, I think the cat they might have told us that. For that to be hidden. Uh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, black comes to twenty nine, which comes to Diana, and yeah. uh, cat comes yeah. to twenty four, and you do a black cat that comes to fifty three, which comes to Janine. So anyway, you know. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Michael, you were going to ask me some questions. Yeah, I'm going to have to run quick, so give me a couple. All right, of questions. yeah, we, we can we can make this last one. That'd be cool. Um, the the difference between uh, the space programs, <clears throat> I believe there's a uh, a dark hat one and a white hat, uh, but pretty much the dark hat's probably been um, you know controlled to a certain extent because I have memories of having to work with the the guys that were part of the Hitler group uh, and not being very happy about it because they weren't up to our par, up to our speed. Because those of us in the White Hat group, we, we train on Venus and some other places, and we're, we're really high speed, but they're still locked in anger and fear and all that kind of stuff, so they're not as as, uh, as effective. So I was just wondering if that really is the case. And I, I've heard of a lot of people that are, you know, uh, in these in these programs like we were talking about, so they, they sound like Dark Hat pro, uh, programs, and then there's a there's a separation that's been branching off and being more effective going forward. So uh, I, instead I'm getting sort of information. So I'll just get, I'll just tell you what I'm getting. Okay. I get that you've been on both of those teams, mm -hmm. even like unbeknownst and or not with your conscious permission, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could have, like what I get is you could have even been secreted to the the bad one and you were disappointed in being there right okay so taken against your will uh, interesting and they or they tricked you is another way i can say it mm -hmm. so there's definitely two different space programs and one's definitely run by some bad guys and then the good one i do i did get venus energy around the good one because we've got this six so six is it's very much a libran card and mm -hmm. the six yeah sign of the zodiac and whatever so mm -hmm. we've got libran here which is ruled by venus mm -hmm. so yeah so we that's the seventh sign of the zodiac but this particular card is very much about libra and venus okay so we've got so the lovers so we've got that you were in your incarnation that is is the am i saying this right if i say venetian yes okay uh that's when you work for that the good guy space program does that make any sense because you're altered from humanness so you're not entirely the way you look right now mm, yeah you be in a different i guess um suit does that make sense you wouldn't yeah, look there, there, there was there was uh i think there was a time where um i was twinned so uh by that twinning they they basically you know because i have have a conscious connection because it was twin from me and uh they they okay. uh they use that to, to be part yeah. of the, the space program yeah 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 and that part has come that part has come back and forth in time uh to uh inform me so uh -huh. I, I think we did a show one time where i talked about how i was like you know pre-teen and I'm doing I'm playing putt putt with my friends and me like I am right now, but with some kind of like wild looking spacesuit, uh, came in, went through, came through a portal with no my none of my friends saw it. And I'm like, does does it 
anyone know this? And I got telepathically that you're going to be okay. So I, I went through some, some tough, tough times as a yeah. teenager, but yeah, uh, you know, uh, and who knows, maybe it was for this time too, because, you know, I had that yeah. Archangel Michael experience as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was awesome. Thanks for that. It, that was, it that's gets nice wild. Time. It gets wild when you start talking about this. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does. Well, brilliant. Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Michael. That was really uh, interesting and amazing. Lots of things come out there. So, uh, um, just a final thought. Any thoughts of encouragement as we go into maybe a hot August? Uh, maybe a maybe a nuclear August. I don't know. Or at least the scare of it, and um, a hot summer, and into a cold winter. But I mean, what? Where do you think? You know, what would you say to the audience in terms of keeping the morale up and keeping spirits high? Mm. Yeah, I, th I think we're gonna we're gonna get a lot of negativity. Um, we're we're gonna have to deal with uh, the next few months. But on the other side of that is is always. I've always seen incredible and beauty and golden age and so forth. It'll be a, it'll be a process. It won't be like, you know, tomorrow it's a golden age. It will be a process, but it will be unfolding very quickly because all the, all the negativity that's always impacting us from every single uh, level of our lives basically goes away and we just start cleaning up and, and creating new, mm -hmm. but yeah, there's um there. I think that there's already been, um a stoppage of nuclear events one of those was in new york that's just my feeling mm -hmm. uh, i don't i don't have anything to confirm that but uh i think it's already been stopped out once uh but i think there's more in the works uh but i think there's going to be stopped out too i don't see any nuclear event but it's there's going to be a threat uh maybe even um i talked with a group one time where we thought that they might even stage it even though they can't pull it off, they might stage it um, yeah. through Project Bluebeam type of technology and um, yeah. stuff like that to actually seem like, you know, and then start broadcasting yeah. body counts and all kind of crazy stuff. That's you know, exactly all that what I got, Michael. Exactly. Oh, wow. I got, they were turning off cameras on the buoys out in the ocean and stuff like that because they're going to fake, fake a big wave. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all going to be uh, staged, and there's going to be news reports, and but it's a white hat op, and it's it's going to like because I guess they got to get people at some kind of heightened energy, and then out comes the uh, the truth and uh, big truth bombs, and maybe even uh, EBS and that kind of thing because that's military. The good military steps out of the shadows, but it'll look really tricky for a while and you won't know what's going on. So you got to just stay. So, uh, and a lot of people are going to be in fear, anguish, and unnecessarily with that card. These are all minor arcana. They're not actually going to be in danger, but they're going to think they are and feel right. like they are. Mm -hmm. And they're going to uh, make it look like other people have been perished in this. Okay. So it's going to be like, re you'll think it's real. If you're not one of, of the truthers, like you're going to think it's real. So what we have to do is uh, stay a little bit detached and find safety, be around people that understand us because everybody's going to be flipping out. You're going to have to be the calm in the storm. If you're the type who's really good at like uh, being there for people when they're flipping out, I'm not. I get really anxious, so I'd rather not. Like I'm good afterwards at calming everybody down or beforehand, but in the middle of a big ev event, I'm not the one you want around because I'll be like, I get anxious when everybody's freaking out i know the truth but you know what i mean so i want i'm personally going to plan to be uh finding some nature yeah <laughs> and yeah. i won't you have to think independently i don't know where that card oh there it is you have to think independently and you might want to find an independent place so you're going to hear all of these things government's going to try to round you up it'll look like you're being told all of these things so People that listen to things like that, they'll be doing all the things that the government tells them. Smart people will be knowing that this is all a big, this is the thing. So you get yourself to somewhere that feels peaceful, comfortable, 
where you can just uh, be yourself and ride it out. That's what you got to do. Or if yeah. you're the type who's really good in an emergency, when your friends are all flipping out, you might want to be there to calm them down if you think that's what you're good at. Beautiful. Very nice. So you see some kind of tsunami event, but, but fake, is that what you're saying? Janine with the buoys turned off out in the sea, et cetera? That we I think New York's going to, but I think it could happen different ways all over the world. So there huh. could be events in all of these areas. It's not just one thing that does the whole world. I felt like, so New York will experience this thing, but I think it'll be man, like white hat made, we'll say. So maybe some off world help with that. Yeah. In fact, I did get off world technology was going to create it, an illusion of a big water event. And then there could be events in different places, like you could have a nuclear event somewhere else where it appears to be and you got the sirens going and then there's gonna be something else somewhere else, but all for the excuse to lock everybody down and bring out the good the good guy or the White Hats and uh, uh, round up all the baddies that are left and it a felt swoop because they're gonna have to do it fast. Yeah. You know, the, the Georgia Guidestones went down. Do, have you looked at anything about the Washington Monument going down? One alludes to that on his third book, The Storm, and the, there's a picture of the, of, the, of the needle basically being destroyed. I wonder if I that's... Wonder if, I wonder if that's literal or sort of... Metaphorical. Yeah. I if it's the Judgment Day event or some description. Yeah, so that card popped out there so this is sort of that's a unique it'll be a unique maybe it won't be literal is what i'm getting huh. it maybe it'll be like the taking down of dc but not maybe literal okay okay president trump actually said just a couple of days ago he talked about how beautiful washington dc is as, as is a city because of all its monuments and he said <laughs> he's going to say well he said the way to deal with the home, like kind of, I guess, the uh, the border crossings and people kind of just littering the streets of Washington, apparently, um, he said, is to make huge tents outside of the city and take care of them and get them off the streets. And he made a real point of saying how beautiful Washington, D.C. is as a as a city, as a, yeah. as a capital. Awesome. All righty. Well, that's... Um, I think we'll wrap it up, but excellent. Great to see both of you as always. And yeah. uh, look forward to come, to come before the storm on the fourth. And yeah. uh, maybe something as early as the first. I don't know. Uh, time, but timelines change all the time. <laughs> you know, maybe it's our own timelines. Who knows? But uh, it's fascinating and uh, we'll get there. So, all right. Thanks, all right. Michael. God bless you. And uh, thank you, Janine. God bless you too. Thank yeah. you, guys. God bless you, you guys. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye.